Welcome to the introduction tutorial of the ACES CCT Synthetic Film Low Gluts and DCTL. The chances are high that you bought this product if you're watching this tutorial. So first of all, thanks a lot for the purchase and your support. I will show you how to install this package and a basic setup of how to use these LUTs and the DCTL within Resolve. So first of all, you need to unzip it and then you have a demystify color and ACES CCT synthetic film lock LUTs folder in place. Here are all the LUTs and the DCTL. It's very important that you leave the DCTL within the same folder of the LUTs, otherwise it won't work correctly. Please be aware that you need the studio version of Resolve for the DCTL to run. With the free version, the DCTL won't run, but you can still use all the LUTs. If you already bought the Film Aesthetics 2 pack, for example, or if you just have a Demystify Color LUTs folder in place already, you can just copy the ACES CCT folder into your Demystify Color LUTs folder. The easiest way to get to your LUTs folder is if you go to your project settings and via the color management, you have an option that says open LUT folder. And if you click on this one, your main LUT folder opens up. And as you can see, I have a demystify color folder in place. And then I just can copy the SSCCT synthetic film lock LUTs folder in there. Please be aware that you need to restart Resolve. If you're loading up a DCTL and Resolve is started, you need to close it and open up again. So the DCTL is showing up and also all your LUTs will show up then. Another important thing to mention is that you should always use the 3D lookup table interpolation with the tetrahedral math and not the trilinear one. Now click on save and this is our project now. As you can see, here are my LUTs and I can simply double click on them and they're loading up. But we won't do it this way because first I want to show you my project setup. So all of these shots are filmed with a red camera and they are in red white gamut RGB log 3G10. But they are rendered as ProRes. So I group them together and in the group preclip level I'm using a IDT which stands for Input Device Transform. And for this one, I'm using the ACES transform and I'm going from red white gamut RGB log 3G10 to ACES CCT because all of the LUTs need a ACES CCT AP1 input. I would suggest to always use the latest ACES version available, which is 1.3 at the time being. And since the 1.3 version, there's also a nice gamut compressor included and I would use this one at the IDT level with the reference gamut compress. At the group post clip level, at the very end of our node tree, so nothing should come after my ODT, which stands for output device transform, I'm using a ACES transform again. And this time I'm going from ACES CCT to REC 709 because my display is calibrated to REC 709. Please be aware if you want to work color managed that this should be your very last node. There shouldn't be anything else coming afterwards and you need to be aware that you can't put anything on the timeline. But you could also add a node here and place it at the very end in here. That would be a valid workflow too. You just have to keep in mind, as I already said, nothing should come after this ODT. So now let's go back to the clip level and open up another serial node. And now we can apply, for example, the Fuji one, because normally with greenery, the Fuji gives really lovely results. And as you can see this before and after, now we can simply balance our footage with some printer lights. And you can see I instantly get really lovely results. With your key output slider, you can easily dial back the look. So for example, if you just want 50% of it, that's perfectly valid too. Or you can drag the slider to your liking. You can also add a layer mixer and add a second, for example, the red cyan one. And if you leave it at one, then you just have this look enabled. But if you dial it back, now you have a combination of the first and the second LUT. And this can lead to really nice results too. And the LUTs are built that way that you can mix and combine them. And usually this leads to the best looking results. 
Normally I use them at the very end of my note tree, so just right before my ODT, but sometimes I'm also using them right within my workflow and do some grading before and afterwards. If you use them right before the ODT, you have the advantage that all your footage gets processed through this look and this ties the footage a bit better together so you get the more homogeneous look of the entirety of your film. So let's go somewhere around here. Yeah, now you see the sole very nicely. What you also can do if the black level is too high for you, for example, you can add a node afterwards and just drag down the black point of the image. Or you could also use the HDR wheels and use your black offset. If you're using them, you need to be aware to use the correct color space in here too. So I would set this one to ACES CCD and the output color space to REC 709, Gamma 2.4. And now all of the color manage tools are working as expected and have the correct math implemented. So this would be the approach if you don't have the studio version. And if you have the studio version, I would highly recommend to use the DCTL that's included with this pack. So just drag your DCTL OFX on the node and type in DMC. And this one is also called ACES CCT Synthetic Film Logs. And as you can see, now you don't need to apply LUTs, but you have your looks in here. So you have the main look, which has as default the 16mm 500T normal, but you can choose whatever you want to. And you also have a sub look available. For example, I can go to the red cyan now. And as you can see, this is doing nothing. And the reason for this is because I need to set the mixed look to some value. So if we go to 50, the main and the sub look will have the equal amount. So at zero, we only have the main look. At 100, we only have the sub look. And at 50, they are really mixed together 50-50, but you can also use something in between. And the main look intensity is basically the same as the key output strength I've showed you earlier. So I can say I only want 75% of my main look and let's say 65% of my sub look. And then I can also drag this slider and see what's the best fit for this combination for that footage. Also just don't type in any specific numbers. I just wanted to give you the explanation, but I would suggest to just drag the sliders and see what's looking good. So I would say somewhere around here is pretty nice. And with this bypass, button you can easily bypass the sub look if you wish to or you can hit command d to bypass the entire look now let's rebalance and you see you can get some really nice looking images very quickly and very easily out of this look back. So let's see another shot. Just copy and paste this one. So do a rough first balance. So maybe somewhere around here and then see what fits this footage best. Maybe go for the 16mm and the Fuji one. And just drag the sliders until you get the nice looking result. So somewhere around here looks pretty good if you ask me this is a before and after. And as you can see, the possibilities with this one are really nice and more or less you have a very large amount of different combinations available. And I really love dialing in my look like that. And I hope you like it too and you like this look back. And because I'm notoriously bad at grading with my mouse and while recording tutorials, I just prepped a few shots so you see the power of this new look back. Obviously they're all in aces again. And so here's the DCTL. So you see I mixed the main look with the sub look again. Here are the values. And I mixed the 16 mil with the red cyan one. I just added some gray inhalation and a power window in here and one in here. And then there is just one node of grading. So you see I used a tiny bit of gain and lift, some offset and one U versus curve for this red ledge here. And that's it. And I think the result is really nice. So here's a before and after. 
Here's a shot we've already seen. Again, some halation and grain. Then I mix the Fuji with the red cyan one with these values. Add power window in here. And one in here. And again, only one node with some minor grading. So you see a tiny bit of lift and gamma and offset and a bit of log shadow wheel. And that's already it. And here's a before and after. And here's the shot from before again. I mix the 16mm normal with the Fuji one with these values. Halation grain again. Some more power windows for this one. So one in here and then inside. Lightened a tiny bit in here, darkened in here. And then there's a bit of offset. Tiny bit of lift cam again. And a hue versus loom curve for the reds. And I think that was just a minor refinement again with lift cam again and offset. And let's do it before and after for this one. And last but not least, an Ari shot. So here's my IDT and ODT, elation grain again, some power windows, some minor balancing. And I mixed the half with the red cyan look with these values. And one more time, a before and after. Power window in here, in here, in here. And in here, and again, only lift cam again offset and a tiny bit of the log wheels. And in here, I just refined again a bit more. And that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps to get you started. Feel free to experiment a lot with them and have fun playing around. Bye.